Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Conservation Commission meeting for July 22, 2021. Um, this meeting is being held remotely. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. Um, <clears throat> I will now have a roll call. Um, Tim Hilchey present of commissioners that is. Get off mute here. Uh, Pete Law present. You're muted, Bill. Well, it looks like Bill Marapisi is present, so I will call him present. <laughs> he might be having a technical difficulty. Um, did everyone receive the minutes from the June 24th meeting? Commissioners? Yes, I did. Pete Law. Did you have any commentary on it, Pete? It looks like Bill is um, going to try and rejoin the meeting. So, yeah, I did not. Um, I was not at that meeting, uh, but reading through the business as we talked about, look at him. I, I have no comments on it. Yeah, I had the same response. So, I think that their minutes are in order, but we'll let Bill's, Bill who took them chime in once he's. Can you hear me now? Oh, there you are, Bill, yeah. Okay, all right, so Bill Mayor, PC present. Excellent, and Pete and I just discussed the, uh, the minutes you took from the June 24 meeting. I didn't see any problems. Um, Pete who wasn't there read them, but didn't see anything. Uh, did you have any additional comments, Bill? I did not. I mean, I, I would like to make a motion to um, approve as written, um, uh, knowing that it would just be you and I, Tim, right. who would be able and to I'll second that. So um, any further discussion? Um, hearing none, um, I vote to approve the minutes of the June 24th meeting. And Bill Mayor of PC, I, I, I vote yes as well. Yeah, Tim Hilgey votes yes. Okay, and uh, so Pete, do you want to abstain? Yeah, I think since I was there, uh, Pete Law, I'll abstain. Okay, so the motion carries 201. All right, so new business. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about um, an RDA request from Treehouse uh, Brewery and um, at one community place, um, Pete Law and I did a site visit and now I will turn it over to the Treehouse folks to walk us through what's, uh, what phase two means for the Conservation Commission. Do you wanna start Mark or do you want me to go? You can go right ahead, Tony. Okay, um, good evening everybody. My name is Tony Wanceski. For some reason my video is not working tonight, but um, um, I'm a civil engineer with SVE Associates and we're located in Brattleboro, Vermont and uh, representing um, Treehouse Brewery on their phase two improvements uh, at the old Channing L Beat site at one community place on five and 10. Uh, the property is, um, I don't know, can you try to give me the screen so I can maybe share a, a map or Sure, or I could share the screen, whichever you prefer. Um, okay, well, it's it's up to you if you want to. I didn't know if your video was if your video oh. wasn't working. Well, that was a problem, but yeah, I don't know if I can still do it whether you would see it or not. I'm not an expert on that, but um, give it a try. And if not, I can call up your RDA or I think okay. it has maps and photos and stuff in it. Okay. Um, do you see the share screen at the bottom? Yeah, I picked on it. All right. That, all right. Can you guys see that? Yes. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at an overall existing conditions map. This is sheet one of the set. And what it is, is some detailed survey information 
um, overlaid on um, the state's uh, aerial photography. So you'll see that this site comprises numerous parcels all the way to the area of, uh, north of a parcel owned by Deerfield. Uh, this is the South County down here in the lower left, which is the emergency, South County Emergency Building and the fire department's immediately south of that. And you can see that this parcel actually runs um, and is fronting on North Main Street. So we have a lot of frontage, but um, we only have a few access points to this property. And the, the main one is right at this point right here. So this overall, I'll get into the details and focus where our work is, but um, we identified, and, and you'll see in your package that we had Ward Smith from when the wetland services go out and actually flag the wetland resources associated with the property, not to the north of our work or to the south, but we've got the perimeter pretty much um, um, uh, identified. On this property, we've identified boarding vegetated wetlands, um, bank associated with a perennial stream. The perennial stream crosses underneath five and 10 and follows along our westerly portion of the property. And then it, eventually it crosses back over. And with that bank and then where the stream runs, you have um, uh, land, uh, you have land underwater and um, <clears throat> also um, riverfront associated with a perennial stream. So I'm gonna move to a more detailed um, site. Uh, there's three sheets because the land is pretty big. So what we've done is um, to break it up into separate sheets. So this is primarily the improved portion of the site. And this is the access that crosses the perennial stream, which is right in this area. This line here is the 100 foot buffer to the identified wetlands. And this line here is a 200 front foot riverfront. You'll also notice a dashed line here, which identifies a floodplain, but it is in the B zone, which means it's the 500 year floodplain that would be considered non-special hazard flood A zone. But we've shown that it's been identified on the firm map. Um, we have numerous little wetlands here. This is wetland that goes to the north and um, um, we have a small finger in back here. So if you look, I mean, really I'm, I'll bounce up. This is the southerly portion. So you've got buffer, you've got riverfront and it wraps around. This is all in the field that's hay down in there. And, um, and then to the north, this area here, we only identified, this is, the, this is the, the field to the north side of the existing improvements. This is the old soccer fields where the kids used to play years ago. Um, this is all wooded in here. So we identified wetlands now. They, they've grown in this area from back in 1986 or so when Ty and Bond did, the, that's the last delineation that I could find. Um, and then we've got a couple of isolated wetlands here that are non-jurisdictional. So that overall is the wetland resources on the site. And what I'd like to do next is to go to um, the, the proposed improvements from an overall bird's eye view. So we can identify the area. So I'll tie you to our, our RDA um, application. And if you read through that, you'll know that I identify four separate work areas. Um, Essentially phase two of treehouse. Um, well, I'll back up a step. Phase one was an operation that we got received approval from planning board and from uh, ZBA to operate um, a pickup, a can pickup um, operation out of the warehouse. And that happens in this location here. Um, and essentially you order online and you come through, they route you through and you pick up your beer and you leave the site. Phase two, generally stated, is going to be a restaurant in this lower floor of what was called the Winter Garden Building. And um, so that would have food and um, pouring and you can, Mark can talk more about that if you have questions. So I'm gonna focus on the site improvements. So a change from, a, from a, a, a publishing, private publishing company use with warehouse manufacturing office and so forth 
um, you'll know that there was very little parking up in front here and most of the parking with employees and that were to the north of the building. So when we make the change in use to a restaurant use, um, then what we need to do is to provide more uh, AD accessible. The, the space is there in the warehouse area. This building was done probably in the middle 70s. And so the codes were a little different there. The ADA accessibility doesn't meet code now. And we wanted to provide additional spaces there. So our first work or work uh, what I identify as work area number one really removes this pavement and this bank of parking pavement here. So we're gonna be losing that pavement. We're going to rebuild this walk, which is our main link from the parking area on the north to the main entrance. We're gonna redo this sidewalk and this curving here and add four ADA parking spaces. With this area over here, we're gonna add parking spaces, which include eight electric vehicle charging stations. Uh, the existing light pole stays. And in order to, now this is, this a portion of this is in the riverfront. Now I tried to do all of our work and maintain the existing perimeter of the degraded area, which is that outside edge of pavement here to the parking lot. So we're inside the degraded area. And what we're going to do there is we're gonna change out that AC paving. We're gonna remove four white pines. They're very large and they're, you know, um, you know they're, they're, they're pretty old. So we're gonna take those out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this with porous pavement. And so once we do that, we're also gonna add, I believe there's seven Coast of dogwood trees that we're going to add in this area. So this work area number one is within the degraded area. It is uh, provides additional parking, provides electric vehicle parking station, and also adds four um, ADA spaces that meet current code. And that would be in, to enhance our main entrance to um, we call building B here. And we're also going to add a small concrete pad here for um, uh, bicycle parking. So um, that is our phase one area of work. Phase two, the reason why we're here for phase two, this is the buffer zone to a wet area up against the railroad and the pavement. You'll know that if you go out and look, there are some storm drains there, catch basins that capture water from here, all of this back, it's captured in catch basin. Everything gets routed to basins in front here and then they go to the stream. This area over here goes to basins and, and dumps directly to the stream. So back in the back of the loading dock area, there is a loading door here. And if you've gone over there recently, you'll see that Treehouse has built a wooden landing and ramp there. Because while they're doing this work here where they're on the fly comes, they didn't have a way because they're doing doing that work. So they're, they're using this area to bring the beer out to the customers so that they can route through and then leave. That existing um, door, it's, it's not a functional loading dock door because it's like 16 inches up from grade on one side and 18 inches up from grade on the other side. So typically it would have it be a loading door would be flush with a lift of some sort or would be down four feet or so. So it'd be at a typical um, level for a trailer to be used for unloading or loading. Similar to what is done down here against this wall, we've got banks of loading doors and they're depressed four feet, which allows for trailers to be backed up to there for easy unloading and loading. They're also with this site back in the day, and I don't know if it was ever used, it must have, there's a railroad spur that comes down through and there's a bumper right here and there's a loading door here about four feet off the off the, the below the finished finished grade, and that's all lawn right here. It's it's grass in this area here. So what we're going to propose because Treehouse wants to put their recycling dumpster here, we're going to pour concrete pad there so we can use that door. Um, we're going to remove the spur rails and the bumper, and we're going to pave this little portion of lawn that's there now. So it'll allow us to bring in. Um, uh, and unload that dumpster for use there. Uh, in order to add some additional parking for employees, we're going to add a bank of 14 stalls right here. Uh, they'll be put in up close to the building. So um, we'll do a little bit of excavating there to lower that level. It'll be at pavement level that's there right now. This building was constructed with 
I call it a cheek wall that's lifted up off the floor inside and soil was, um, was uh, um, uh, laid up against the building and created a false look that the building height was not too high. I mean, it's, it's very creative and Mr. Beat did a very awesome job in my opinion when he designed this with the architects and the site designers to uh, put this building on this site. There's, there's a lot of features that, um, I mean, you don't see around here. So in my opinion, he was ahead of his time when they did this in industrial building. Um, this area back here is all um, existing parking and that will remain. And then we've got a little finger of wetland right in here. And so what we're gonna do there, this is the buffer zone of that. So that's another reason why we're going to be in this area um, and why we're here asking for uh, a negative determination. So as I said earlier, when we, and I'll get into details, bigger blowups of this area for you. Um, but when we, we change this use to a restaurant here, there's an existing brick patio here, which is, um, you know, some of it's still in good shape, but a lot of it is in poor shape. And they're, 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 um, they're actually gonna put glass sliding doors here so people can go in and out of the restaurant to the patio. So the existing brick and the steps and that will be removed and we're gonna do a stamped concrete um, um, uh, refurbishment of the existing um, patio. The patio is not gonna enlarge, it's gonna stay the same. The, the walls and the landscaping areas will be there. They're gonna improve the landscape areas because it was kind of overgrown and um, in, in poor shape. There's an existing drainage system there that we will reuse. Um, so no, no additional drainage work in that area will be required. Uh, we're going to add in a couple of ADA parking spaces here. And with that, this, this is a loading dock area back there. So the grade falls off. This is humped in here. So it's above grade. And there's a couple of white pines that we're gonna remove because I'm going to bring in two new ADA accessible concrete walks to get people from this area to the patio and to the restaurant. There'll also be, there's an existing DG trail here that we're gonna upgrade and allow for um, uh, a connection back here. This, this is an area that's gonna get widened a little bit with gravel, and that would be for future uh, food truck parking. We've got four or five spaces there for available food truck parking. Um, next to the building, next to this AD walk, ADA walk in this area, we'll be constructing a concrete pad for uh, placement of an outside pizza oven. So it's a wood-fired pizza oven um, and Treehouse is intending on um, cooking pizza there to be used um, uh, for patrons in the, in the restaurant area. Now, one other thing, we're gonna widen this loan dock, very small. There's an existing guardrail guarding a generator there, but this is a little piece of lawn. We're gonna just widen that out a bit. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is back at this area, there's some dead space that what we are going to do there is we're gonna sign that as an area um, for people that are parking in the parking lot. If they don't want to walk the sidewalk to come in the main entrance and get over to the restaurant, they'll be able to stand here. We'll have um, cart shuttle so that the patrons can get shuttled back here, dropped off at the ADA walk to walk down and then they can turn and go back. So they can shuttle patrons back and forth along the back aisle. So that's an overall. Um, so the patio is work area three and this walk pizza oven and gravel area is work area four identified in the RDA. Um, this is the engineered plan for the phase one work. So this is the um, course pavement area, the new walk, ADA concrete area for a bike. There's a cross section of how we handle the porous pavement. Um, work area two, this is where the new concrete ramp and, um, and landing area will be to give access down to this, uh, to the asphalt area. This is the new concrete pad for the recycling dumpster. This is a little area of pavement that'll allow us to get the trucks in to remove and, and place dumpster. These are the new 14, um, uh, parking spaces for employees that are coming off the existing asphalt island. And, um, and there's just more grading, more detail, you know, some sections and stuff on how we're instructing the, um, um, the contractor to build that. So 
Um, this is the existing conditions of the existing patio. These two trees will stay. We're going to um, keep those in. These landscape walls will all stay. We've removed the overgrowth in here. That'll be changed and, and replanted. This is that flood zone, this line that I'm showing here. And this is the, um, this is the 100 foot buff, uh, buffer. And this is the um, riverfront line. This is the buffer zone to that other small finger wetland. So if you get down in here, you'll see um, the new stamped concrete um, steps and ramping. Uh, these are the new walks. That's the pizza oven area. This is the DG walk that's gonna be just refurbished. And if you go out there, you'll see there's old um, ornamental pedestrian lighting that has kind of um, seen its time and, and it's in kind of rough shape. So there's a picture in here um, of their operation in Charlton and you'll see this kind of lighting um, post with a fixture on top. That gives you an idea of what they're intending to do along the walks and down in this area to provide low light pedestrian. We're gonna plant three Cosa dogwoods in this area and we're gonna plant three over in this area to make up for those two white pines that, these are the two white pines that we're gonna remove. And there'll be three more Cosa dogwoods over here that we'll, we'll, um, we'll plant um, as mitigation for losing those two. This ring of oaks along the existing trail here will remain, we're protecting those in place. It's a wonderful feature that Mr. B put in uh, years ago and, and it really fits. So that's, that's gonna stay. And um, I think that, and those are the two ADA spaces here. And that is it. That is essentially the phase two improvements uh, to support tree houses um, use of the, um, uh, the ground floor of the old winter garden building as a restaurant, uh, restaurant use. So that's it, a um, little long, I apologize, but I wanted to make sure that I got everything um, um, uh, described that we're intending on doing there for you. So thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, so um, Pete Law and I were able to go and speak with you, Tony, the other night, um, but Bill Maripisi wasn't able to. So I'm gonna open it up to the commissioners to ask questions if they have any for you. Uh, this is uh, Pete Law before Bill ahead, jumps Pete. in. Um, maybe Tony can show Bill where your proposed um, barriers will be for um, runoff barriers on the, on, around the areas of construction. Uh, can you say that again? I'm sorry, Pete. Uh, where the, um, I can't think of the word, but the barriers that you're gonna put uh, oh, next okay. in, the, in the back yeah, there. Yeah, um, so. Um, give there, Bill an idea of uh, yeah, the mitigation. Yeah. Yeah, so there are multiple catch basins on the site. Um, so each of those catch basins, if you were to go out and look at them right now, um, you'll see that there are silt sacks in those, okay? Um, this sign as part of phase one is being removed. We're taking out the Channing Beach sign and we're putting in um, you know, a treehouse sign and there's erosion control there around that. Um, this dark line along the back is all erosion control. Even though that existing pavement stays, we are working inside of that. And everything kind of drains in here. There are catch basins more towards the building. There's one at the corner, one over here. Um, there are silt sacks in there, but just to protect uh, this dark line here is an erosion straw wattle that'll protect this wetland here and that grass strip between the railroad and the parking area. Back here, we have that little, um, Wing, uh, wetland finger right there. This along this whole stretch will have a straw wattle there protecting that. Uh, catch basins uh, down in here and all, they're, they're all in, all the silt fences in in that area. And I think, um, you know, we're working with Northern Construction and um, they're very uh, um, educated in stormwater pollution prevention plans and management. They've actually gone because they're doing some demo in this area and you'll see back over here outside of um, the buffer zone in that they're, they've got all of their material and stuff here. So addition protect, additional protection, even though there's a high ridge here, they've got straw wattle that runs all along this whole edge over here, which I don't show because we're not in, in you know, we're, we're down in a hole here. We're not, it can't drain that way, but the, for added protection, they have that there. So, um, I mean, it's, it's 
it's pretty confined to, like I said, the degraded areas or inside of those areas, but we do show um, protection mostly back here because we're very close to the wetland. Um, in this area, when we cut that out for the forest pavement, we'll actually be cutting a hole in there. So water can't get from here or there. Um, and this is high here also, this is a berm. Um, and so the only place for water to go is to these drains and those all have silt sacks in them. What they did, the reason why the berms are all around the site and it's very good and it's smart is when they built this site, they, they generated a ton of topsoil. And so I believe that when they did all of that, they used that topsoil to create these berms as a visual and also screening. And that's, that's why you have all of these, um, these berms around the north and the west side of the parking area. So that's our, our proposed um, erosion control. So, um, hi, hi everyone, Bill Mayer, PC. Uh, Tony, thank you for that um, really very comprehensive uh, presentation. And Pete, thank you for teeing up the question because uh, that certainly was going to be my question. Um, uh, so, um, being that I, I have been on the property um, uh, numerous times, it was a COVID-19 vaccination site, um, uh, which I spent uh, three times providing vaccinations. So I've seen it um, many times of the year. At this point, I don't have further questions. Um, I believe the applicant has done their homework, so. So, um, Tim Hilchey, I do have a couple of questions about just, um, first, the, 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 the porous pavement, is that part of phase one or is that part of this phase? Phase two. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, nothing's been done there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought that that was the case. I just wanted to make sure. Um, the other question I have is, um, when you come back for phase three, this is just my thinking. I'm not necessarily um, sure what the other commissioners think about this, but the current work is contained to already altered features. And, um, you know, I would feel relatively comfortable, you know, just um, approving what, you, what your intentions are in terms of how that relates to the Conserv Conservation Commission's mandate. Um, I would be, <clears throat> less inclined to approve of any delineation at this point. Um, so is phase three gonna involve working in these areas that are not currently um, degraded? And if so, th that would seem to be a more appropriate time to approve a delineation if that's- um... you're, you're all over it. You're exactly right. And that's my opinion too. Um, Phase two is so confined, I, I, that's why I filed the uh, RDA. Um, phase three, there'll be some work within the riverfront areas, mostly trying to upgrade the trails that the beat put in for exercise and walking for their employees. So um, some of those trails might be upgraded. We'll try to do it as infiltration and, and porous, but they will be hardened. Um, um, for emergency vehicle access and so forth. Um, I, my opinion is when we do phase three, it'll be a notice of intent to the commission because we're gonna be working in the north area where the soccer field is and that bank of um, um, uh, white pines on the north to expand the parking area. And so we're gonna get closer to the um, to the um, wetlands there and closer um, to the perennial stream, which would, in my opinion, would, would require a filing of a notice of intent. Um, so yes, uh, that we haven't done much work. We've done some concepts and things like that. Um, we're good with the delineation. It's all been there. It's all been located. It hasn't been verified and confirmed, um, which will be important for you to look at in phase three. Um, so we'll be back in with that. I mean, you're not going to see anything on this side or the south side um, that's too, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll let you know that on the south side, um, kind of where um, this extension is right here from this patio, there will be a pavilion here. And if any of you have gone to Charlton, their main headquarters, they have a beautiful patio 
um, we're going to create something similar to that. Uh, my goal is to try to hold that from being in the riverfront, but it might touch it just a little bit. I mean, it's all an altered area, but, um, but still, um, we, we'll do our best to do that. This trail back here um, might be um, hardened up to this area where there's like a little turnaround kind of event. And these trails will probably just be upgraded because they've been there for a long time, um, but not trying to really widen them at least that I know of right now. It's just really refreshing those. Um, in, the, um, in the north side though, um, uh, on the north side of the parking lot, that's, that's where the bulk of the improvements will be um, from a site standpoint. And um, um, we're gonna try to do it as green as we possibly can. Um, we do have high water table over in that area. We don't have it here. There's a change in soils from there to here. Um, and um, so we're going to have to get creative there. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll share with you as early as we possibly can and get feedback from you. And so, so tonight, um, what are you looking for the commission to approve? I mean, uh, yes, what I'm kind just of determination are you trying to? I'm just looking for a negative determination on the phase two work. Now that can include, um, you know, any conditions that you might have, I, you know, I, um, I'm not sure if you have some standard conditions that you want to add to it, you can, but we're looking for a negative determination, plain and simple. If you want to add some conditions to that, you're, um, um, please feel free to do, let's talk about those. Um, but we're just looking to do the work that I've described here that's described in our application. One final thing, can you scroll down and show me the, um, the, the um, form that you filled out and, and what you're checked off. Okay, I've got a, I, I don't have that in this one. I've got to see if I can um, back out of here and, oh, um, let me see. You can stop sharing and then it'll can disappear. You can, can you bring that up, Tom? Um, I can bring it up if, if you want to stop screen share, uh, I can just call it up. Kind of. Figure out how I stop doing that. Screen share stop. Oh, okay, I got you. I got yep. it. I see it. Yeah, there you go. Thank okay. you. <laughs> so now I'm going to share my screen. Are you seeing anything correctly? Yeah, I can see it, Tim, this is Pete. Okay, so this is, all right, so. And, uh, so these are the things that you have checked off, whether work depicted on plans referenced below is subject to Wetlands Protection Act, uh, whether the area and or work depicted is subject to jurisdiction of any municipal wetlands ordinance, um, and whether the following scope of alternatives is adequate for work in the riverfront area as depicted. Um, so um, Deerfield doesn't have a municipal wetlands ordinance or bylaw. So that's easy enough to deal with. Um, and um, does anybody have any thoughts about this, Pete or Bill? Yeah, and Tim um, is Bill Mayor of PC. So you know, we've we've heard, um, you know, that the work um, uh, depicted, um, you know, could be subject to the Wetlands Protection Act, though um, it is within the already um, altered area of the land. Um, uh, so. I can understand, you know, why why the applicant is looking for a negative determination um, on that, and uh, that we've just heard that any further work um, that would um, be within the riverfront would come to us as a notice of intent. Pete, do you have? Yeah. So is this RDA for all three phases, or is this RDA for? Phase two only. I think it's for all three, isn't it? No, it's for phase two. It's phase two. Phase two. Phase two. Okay, there's a front. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I haven't okay. even designed it yet. Phase three. Yeah. I don't know what you know. 
it'll depend on traffic analysis. It'll, there'll be a lot of different factors and that's gonna be a larger design. It's gonna take some time for us to do. I mean, the goal here is to get the restaurant use open and do the adequate um, cosmetic site improvements to allow for uh, current AD accessibility and, and, and ease of, of transporting patrons back and forth to that use. Okay. So Tim, uh, Bill Mayer, PC again, um, uh, could you please scroll to our options? Um, I think I'm, I was just going to call up another um, determination for that's on the form too. Okay. All right. Um, so it would help me anyway to yeah, exactly. see the form to uh, I'm looking to see if I have um, easy access to form two. Need to obviously need to build a folder with all these forms in it. And Tony, well, uh, Tim is looking for that. This is Pete Logan. Uh, when would this construction begin? And uh, one of our conditions would probably be to ask for notice prior so that we can take a look. Yeah, I mean, th those are the kind of conditions that I would think that you put that the contractor would um, give notice to the board 48 hours prior to starting construction on the phase two site improvements. Um, those are typical things um, that you would see that you have a right to enter the property to review the work um, with proper notice, you know, just because it's a construction site and there are safety concerns, although this is not a, you know, um, significant heavy construction site. Um, there's usually things like that, that you, you know, you, you can do those things. Um, you know, I mean, there's so many, I mean, you go to Greenfield and they've got eight pages of standard conditions. You go um, to another place and there might be five, you know, it's, um, I'm just not sure if you, you have um, anything, um, that's on our agenda to talk about tonight. Okay. <laughs> Develop a list of standard conditions that, uh, so we'll probably talk to Greenfield. <laughs> well, no. I'm, so I'm, <laughs> is Bill Mayer a PC? I, I, I do think that we have enough of a standard that, that we can sure. move forward. Um, I can't find a form two um, easily. So um, I think we're going to have to, Basically, so you're looking for a negative determination three, yep. is that what you're saying? I think that's it. It's one that we do work, but we're not altering um, the well, resources and yep. um, and I don't have one of those forms available to me. I'm, you know, I'm working off of- I know I have one somewhere on my desktop, but yeah. I just- uh, I mean, yeah. I would be happy to review it with you if you wanna you know, mark it and send it to me. Um, I mean, Mark Stinson will look at it because he gets copied on on those, uh, he might offer some some assistance with that too. I mean, that's his his thing. I mean, as being the circuit writer, um, questions that you have, he can assist you with those. Right. Uh, but if you wanna you wanna take a shot at it and send it to me, I'd be happy to look at it. Um, I, I just forget which box it is. I think it is three. Yeah, uh, but I'm I just, pretty sure it's three. Yeah. So, I just, um, I uh, Tim is Bill Mayer, PC. I am actually looking at the form two. Um, right now um i would like to make a motion if i may yes please um i would like to make a motion for a negative three determination um with the following conditions um that uh, uh the applicant provide the deerfield conservation commission with 48 hour notice uh prior to commencement of work so we can inspect the erosion controls and installation of such that the applicant store additional erosion control materials on site to be used if needed and that the applicant leave biodegradable erosion controls in place after the work is completed i 
Is there any other um, thought, Pete, before or before anyone seconds? Um. Oh, I don't think so, Tim. This is Pete. It's, it's okay. Well, I'll thorough. take that motion. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, um, we'll take a vote. Uh, Bill Marapisi? Aye. Pete Law? Pete Law, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. So um, we'll get the necessary paperwork handled by um, Sue Brulot in the building department. And um, I think we're all set for this phase. Um, I will, uh, yeah, look forward to the NOI. And I think at that point, um, there'll be a lot more for us to do and think about. Yes, I think so. And uh, we look forward to working with you and really want to thank you for your time this evening. And um, Treehouse is extremely happy to be in Deerfield and this just allows us to keep moving forward. And uh, yeah, so this is, a, this is a great night. Thank you all. All right, thank, thank you, you, Mark. Kim, Tony. Thank you. Good Thank night. You guys. You're Good welcome. night. All right. So now it's down to Eagle Brook. I was much more involved than I have for you guys tonight, but um, if I could share my screen, it might be helpful. Yes. Please. Do you, do you see the button at the bottom of the? There should, if you yep. move your cursor over the bottom, you'll see share screen. Yep, I got it. Um, <clears throat> thanks everyone. Uh, I, I'm not sure, did, did, did everyone get to come out to the site? Or I missed the site visit. Pete Law and I were able to visit with them um, so that. Bill Mayor, PCI was not able to. Yeah. Okay. And All right. Well, I'll give Wes, a... could you please just identify yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Wes Smith. I'm the uh, director of facilities at the Eagle Brook School. And just want to, I guess I'll give a brief uh, sort of history on what, what we're trying to do here. Um, this is an existing uh, natural turf field that we would like to convert to a synthetic turf field. Um, <clears throat> we, you know, as I, as I started this process, um, sort of a, submitted the RDA early on with hopes of a, of a fast track timeline. Um, to be honest with you, I don't, I don't think that that's uh, a reality at this point anyways. I, I, I think this is a formality. Um, attending this meeting right now because I, I do believe that I'll have to, um, you know, with all my cards on the table, do believe that I'll have to submit an NOI now that we've gotten some of the information uh, back. Um, so this is the showing the survey and the, the wetland delineation. SWCA did the wetland delineation, uh, Northeast Survey Consultants did perform the survey and a firm called SMRT is um, developing the site, I guess, um, or developing the design. So this is um, a just a quick study to show how the field, which is the uh, or the proposed field, which is the purple area, fits into the survey. Uh, um, based on the wetland flagging and the required width of the field, or the or the desired width of the field um, requirements, based on um, you know, what we're trying to achieve for a lacrosse field and soccer field. Um, the construction and the installation of this field in this location, to me, appears to require both wetland buffer impact um, along with some wetland impact, which is the, the green area, which is which is why I think that we'll have to kick this to an NOI and do some further work on our end. Um, so that's, you know, that's just a, um, this just illustrates everything I just talked about. 
Um, you could see the existing field is a, a little smaller, so we're hoping to expand the width of the field, not as much the length of the field. We pretty much have the length. Um, it would require some uh, retaining wall work on the, um, I guess this is the, the southeast corner of the field, and most likely some retaining wall work along here, along further along the southwest corner of the field. You can also see some retaining wall work here, um, which impacts the, the wetland. Uh, the air, this area here, uh, the wetland that was delineated, um, it, to be honest, is much bigger than I thought, uh, a, a greater area than what I initially thought. So that's why um, if it was smaller, I was hoping an RDA would um, move this along and move the schedule along, but I think we're going to have to do a little bit more homework. Um, so I was, you know, weeks ago was hoping to, to achieve a, uh, um, a negative, uh, probably the same, um, negative three, I guess it would be. I don't have that form two in front of me either, but, uh, a negative, um, no, a, yeah, negative determination, but I'm, um, but I'm assuming we might have a, a positive determination on, on one or two of these items that I checked off. Sure. Um, <clears throat> can I um, actually have you stop sharing and I'm gonna, I'm gonna call up the RDA. So um, I did a little discussion with Mark Stinson and um, when we talked earlier, Wes, um, I wasn't sure which of these boxes would be the most appropriate, but mm -hmm. it sounds like what you're saying tonight is that um, you've presented basically a delineation and your, your, um, <clears throat> your engineering study, at least the initial one, indicates that you're going to go into some wetland area and you're going to have to that'll definitely trigger an NOI. Um, and I just wanna talk here to the other commissioners and, and um, get their thoughts on this. One possible course of action, <clears throat> since this is a big project and since it will impact wetlands, um, one possible way we could proceed is to um, go ahead and get these, get these boundaries determined and agreed to so that it's clear that you will need an NOI if you do this in the way that you're presenting it tonight. And um, based on my view of the site, you're gonna impact wetlands areas no matter which way you move. So um, that will all necessitate an NOI. Um, but if we could get the preliminary boundaries studied, um, I'm suggesting that we might hire one of our consultants to just verify the work that your consultant did. And, and then that phase would be over. Um, then when you come back to us with a plan, because we'd need you to come back to us with an NOI, um, then we'd probably use the same person to advise us about wetlands replication and so forth, because that's going to be a component that will definitely come into play at least based on the, the 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 way the field is laid out at the moment and um your uh was it ken uh from smrt is uh, that ken, his name uh ken costello from yeah. smrt yep. right he mentioned uh, he explained to pete and i th that there would be a lot of um engineering under the ground uh in um and crushed or not crushed stone necessarily, but in stone so that it would be a, it would be basic. It's a pretty wet area. And, and so um, it sounds like an interesting project and going to be heavily engineered. So I'm sure we're going to need some advice then too. So um, 
let me turn it over to um, Pete Law first. What do you think of just going ahead and getting the boundaries approved? Yeah, hi, this is Pete Law. Hi, Wes. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, it was a good site visit to walk around. It, it, it's a little complicated. Uh, there's wetlands and boundary wetlands on, on just about every border. Um, so I, I would agree, Tim, that we probably need a little bit more uh, of the consultative consultant review of both the boundaries. And then once we get to the NOI, as you said, they're going to engineer a lot of water flow. That's now, there's some drainage that's there, but a lot of it's percolating through the field and understand it's going to be more channeled to just two or three outlets. And those will be going into the, to the, the wetland areas and just how that flow will affect the specific wetlands that the flow goes into. So a lot of this is going to be um, first a delineation and then kind of reviewing of the engineering of the of the water flow following. So uh, I, it seems it'll be a little bit more complicated than uh, than some. And uh, if we could uh, agree to hire one of our consultants, I think that would be a good uh, a good side for for Deerfield to to take a look at from the commission status standpoint. Could I, um, <clears throat> could I, if I, could I interject? Yes, please. Uh... Yeah. Um, with, with the information that we've, you know, that I've sort of gained through this process, again, saying, you know, hopeful that I could, that this could be fast tracked, but um, the reality is it, that it is going to be more engineering and um, more complicated than, and before we engage, um, another consultant to, to check the delineation. I just want to um, sort of confer with other folks at Eagle Brook that this is in fact the, the location that we do want to convert a, um, an, a natural turf field to an artificial turf field because in my opinion, there are other areas on campus that we could also do this that will not impact wetlands and not need as much uh, engineering and ultimately not cost us as much either to, to go through all this process. Um, so before we, you know, spin a lot of wheels, I think I'd like to um, go back to, you know, the folks that I work with and, and just sort of let them know what the next steps may uh, may entail um, from the town and then from our point of view if we choose to go to, with this location and we might to be honest we might end up just scratching this location and trying to find another one that's <clears throat> less um less complicated mm -hmm. so if i'm hearing you correctly there's two ways we could proceed and it sounds like you're course of action would be to withdraw this RDA and come back to us when you have um, more of an idea what you're going to do. Um, there's another alternative would be if you think you're going to, if you, you're going to consult with your principals and, and try to figure this out in the next month, mm -hmm. we could continue this until the next meeting. There'd be no new filing. Mm -hmm. um, and then you could tell us yes, we're gonna go ahead with this field or no, we're not gonna go ahead with this field. Um, do you think that would allow you enough time to make that decision or? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think that would be the best way to go. I mean, cause, or, I mean, if I, you know, because I was thinking, I was thinking about this heading into this week about withdrawing the RDA and I just felt that everyone's put in enough time anyways and looked at this and I, you know, I wanted to go through the, the process Withdrawing the RDA, um, you know, if I guess if I went, if we went through and we we did choose to go through with this and uh, and submitted an NOI, at that point, would I have to submit the NOI to have your consultant check the delineation? And that would just really that would really be at just adding time to the process, right? Yeah, basically, um, we have we have recently selected a couple of consultants so that we can easily get them to take on work and mm -hmm. do it in a quick turnaround. Um, but yeah, anytime we bring in an all uh, 
a consultant, it's going to add a layer of time. So, you know, not knowing whether you're going to use this site or pick another site, obviously you don't want to spend money on this site right now, but, uh, you know, two weeks from now in between this meeting and the next meeting, you determine, yes, you're going to go ahead with this. Um, it would be behoove you to let us know. And then we could, um, consult with this person or e either one of these consultants and they could come up with a proposal that says this is what's going to cost to do the delineation but yeah. unless you have a fully detailed plan at that point the second phase is going to be involved NOI getting advice about mitigation etc um, and so um, the first part would be probably the lead you know I don't know hourly rates of our consultants are roughly about a hundred dollars yeah. an hour yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not, well, I wasn't as much worried about the cost, just the- No, yeah, but the, the logic of, yeah. So um, chime in anybody if you have other ideas, but- uh, Yes, yeah, so Tim, uh, Bill Mayer, PC, I, I, I do think that um, uh, it sounds to me that, that uh, we would want to allow the applicant to continue uh, this RDA application until, until our August meeting. Um, uh, it doesn't sound to me that further discussion is necessary at this time. Um, uh, I concur. Um, what are your, what are your, what are your thoughts, uh, Mr. Smith? You want to continue yeah, this? I, yeah, I think that's right. I think that's the right thing to do. Just to, you know, buys me some time, allows me to, um, talk it over. And uh, I, at this time, yeah, let's just continue the RDA application. Okay, so yep. I will um, entertain a motion. So I'll make a motion that we continue this to the um, August 26th meeting of the Conservation Commission. And I'll second that motion, Tim, Bill Mayor, PC. Any further discussion? Hearing none, um, Tim Hilchey, aye. Bill Mayor, PC, aye. Uh, Pete Law, aye. All right, so um, keep us apprised of as you make progress and um, we'll look forward to either hearing from you or that you wanna change your plans. Um, if you, um, you know, wanna continue this for, to the August 26th, um, then we're happy to do that. Um, if you decide in between that you're gonna to go to the NOI, um, then uh, that's probably gonna be something that's going to take a considerable amount of time. Sure. Okay. Yep. Any Thank other you. things you want to share with us before you sign off, Wesley? Um, I'm glad it finally stopped raining. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So Bill, Bill Mayor PC, that was all us, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. um, just in time. Um, yeah. Well, it was all Pete, actually. Yeah, uh, we made a negative determination on that. <laughs> so, um, no, I, I appreciate the time you put into it so far, and I'll, I'll get, I'll, I'll continue to feed you guys information as we make a decision. So, okay, okay. we'll do all whatever right. we can do. Yeah. All Thank right. You. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Sure. All right. So now we have um, something that. Uh, I don't uh, see any representative for this next item that's on the agenda, which is uh, the 144 North Main Street. Um, that was the, uh, the, the fuel tanks that were buried in the ground on the farm, the Bloody Brook farm that we went out and had the site visit at. Okay. That work has been completed. And um, let me call up the paperwork. Did, you bo did, did both of you see that? I was looking for it just before the call. I think I didn't find it. So I was trying to remember which one that was. Okay, so I'm gonna call up, um, let's see. I will um, share my screen and. And we could, if I could make Bill Mayer PC, just make one comment while you're sharing your screen. Uh, sure. I, I do believe now that the land has changed hands, uh, that it was sold. Uh, it? So that may be why there's not representation here, uh, but I do remember reading uh, uh, the letter from Lyons Witten. 
Okay. Yeah. They, that the work was completed. Right. Um, yeah. The, I went out to the site myself just because I happened to be driving by and I, and I went in and visited and I spoke with the previous, if, if the prop, I think it was Janet Kelly who was currently. That still is there. correct, Tim. Yes. Yeah. Um, and she, she showed me the work and it, they didn't cut any of the trees down that we talked about. Um, the gravel, um, surface had been restored and, um, the reports that, um, OHI did, um, indicated that they removed a lot of soil, um, but that there was no leaching beyond um, the footprint that we talked that we had discussed when we visited the site. Um, but uh, let me see if I can find another. This might be the same thing. Okay, yeah, there's another piece of um, information that I'm going to stop the share of this, this first thing and share something else. So this is, I guess, what they're, they're requesting. I guess this is um, not what I'm looking for either. I was hoping that uh, there was technical data that was sent along with this. Oh, maybe this is it. Let me open this one final thing. All right, so one final share and I'm hoping this is what we need to see. Okay, so this is, um, I guess, what um, was filed with the DEP on the 25th of June. And um, describes what, what the actions that took place, removal of contaminated soils, reuse, recycling, or treatment of the, and that was done offsite. Did you, did you both receive this information? I, I think Sue sent it to all of us, but Tim, it's Bill Mirror PC. I did uh, receive it and I did review it. Um, okay. Did it, you understand it? it? <laughs> uh, well, um, so I would just like to make a statement that sure. um, uh, in reading this information um, uh, that was in collaboration with DEP, um, I mean, I think that that provides us the safeguards that the work was completed as required. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, um, you know, uh, I think in any role you, you become beginner to expert and um, uh, I, it gave me confidence that the work was completed as we asked and as DEP asked. So I don't, I, I think it's reasonable for the Deerfield Conservation Commission to agree to a certificate of compliance given that the engineer provided us what was done in collaboration with DEP. Right. What's your thoughts, Pete? Yeah, this is Pete Law. I believe I reviewed it. I, as, there's, as you're scrolling through, I was trying to jog my memory. I couldn't find it before tonight's call. Um, but I, I agree with Bill. If it's been done with collaboration with DEP, um, that we're probably in a pretty good position here. Mm -hmm. And based on my site visit, um, Tim Ilchi, that uh, I didn't see any alteration to any of this, any of the vegetation that was um, potentially going to be affected. 
and um, based on my discussion with the uh, the owner and my reading of these documents, I think that we are in a good spot to um, approve um, certificate of compliance. Um, if, uh, if if the rest of the commission agrees. So Tim, Bill Mayor, PC, was that a motion that you just made? I didn't make a motion, no. I was okay. just saying that. All right. Stating um, my position, but uh, so I will so, entertain a motion. Uh, Bill Mayor, PC, I would like to make an emotion, a motion to accept the certificate of compliance as written by OHI Engineering um, and provided to provided uh, to the Deerfield Conservation Commission. I believe we are accepting, not a yep. approving. Yep. Um, any any yeah. thoughts, Pete? No, there's Pete Lloyd, second the motion. All right, uh, if there's no further discussion, then um, I will uh, call the vote. Bill Mara, PC? Aye. Pete Law? Aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. All right. Um, so we will uh, let the applicant know and um, now we're on to basically a couple of discussion items. Um, Tim, it's Bill Mayor of PC. May I, before we go there, sure. may I just, uh, I do think we have an emergency, um, some emergency work that we have to ratify at this meeting. Right, I was gonna bring that up. Um, during, so yes, um, this morning um, I signed it off on an emergency uh, certificate for, um, work related to the flooding on Route 5 uh, in front of Richardson's Candy Kitchen and extending up towards Wapping Road. Uh, and um, that gives the state DOT 30 days to um, address what's in its 20 foot setback on either side of the road and also approves work for the town to continue beyond that 20 feet, the idea is to open, um, remove silt that's blocked the flow of water into the large wetland area that um, is on the west side of um, Route 5 um, along the Williams Farm uh, land. And um, on the on the far side of that property, the water is flowing freely and it's flowing through the new culvert that was installed last year. Um, but immediately adjacent to Route 5, there's a lot of silt buildup. So the work had, work has commenced as this morning um, and is pr probably gonna continue tomorrow and into next week. Their, their goal is to open a, um, to, not open, but to um, <clears throat> to reopen the channel that used to let the water flow uh, away from that site. Uh, and DOT may or may not be proposing to cut Route 5 and install a new pipe um, near the culvert that sits in front of uh, Richardson's Candy Kitchen. Um, but that's, that's something that um, you know, this emergency order would allow them to do in the next 30 days if that's what they decide to do. Um, but that would be done by the mass DOT. Um, so um, is there any discussion about what uh, you think should happen or your thoughts on the situation? So Tim is Bill Mayor of PC. I just want to say first um, that thank you um, for responding uh, and thank you to the people who are doing the work uh, because uh, Route 5 and 10 is a major um, route for many people. Um, I, my feeling is that or and um, is that we at this point would I, I believe we ratify the emergency certification um, um, so that we're allowing the work to to done to be done right i mean i believe the work can already be done because you've already signed it but i 
do right. believe we have to ratify it. You do. You do, in fact, have to ratify the action. Yeah, this is Pete Law. So, uh, just before we get there, is there anything that we have to do to review the process, or is this a um, you know, a process that they can do what they need to do to get the water flowing. Yeah, basically, um, I think that's one of the troubles about emergency certification is you're saying there's an emergency and you're authorizing a, somebody to do work in order to mitigate the emergency. And um, I think what we said in the, um, in the um, certification was that they would be able to remove silt and vegetation as necessary to uh, reopen the, the channel for the water to uh, flow in its normal stream um, stream bed. Um, so as for us to be able to control anything, I don't really see how we, <laughs> yeah. how we can um, have to rely on DOT to do their part and then the town um, Kevin Scarborough is going to be overseeing the work that the town is responsible for the highway department that's my understanding okay I was just wondering what the uh, yeah I'd like to get more that we had to do or um, do they just go but I, th I think if you if the wording and I, I read it just before the, the meeting that's you know return it to its original bank so they shouldn't be doing any channeling or straightening or anything of that nature right that's that's my understanding right um and um in order to expedite the thing i i basically said that uh, kevin scarborough wrote wrote the description of what work needed to be done and uh i'm just signed off on it so that they the dot had the contractors there to start the work um and john pachura came to my house with the certification at about 815 so that the work could commence. Um, so I, yeah, if there's no other discussion, I would, would have entertain a motion to approve the certification. So Tim, uh, Bill Mayor, PC, um, and I make a motion that we would ratify the emergency um, uh, uh, certification uh, for this work. Pete Lai, second the motion. There's no other discussion. Um, we'll call the vote. Tim Hilchey, aye. Bill Mayor PC, aye. Pete Law, aye. All right, thank you. Um, thank you for reminding me about the speaking about that. I meant to do that at the beginning of the meeting and then uh, got away from me. So now discussion. Um, the first item is um, <clears throat> whether we want to approve um, using Adobe sign or other electronic signature means for being able to sign documents as an option. And that's something that I think um, Sue Brulot and Casey Warren were suggesting that uh, might ease our ability to sign documents. Um, so Tim, Bill Mayor, PC, I, I do think it's a brilliant uh, proposal. Um, uh, I do not believe that that we will be back totally in person um, uh, immediately. Um, so I just had one question, you know, if if that motion's being proposed by Casey and Sue, uh, there is money in the budget to pay for the software for such to happen. Yeah, apparently um, that would be, that's a good question. And I think um, if we make a motion to approve that, uh, you know, I think we just clarify that uh, assuming that the town is, you know, going to buy the necessary software. Um, and this be a lot, I, I'm, I'm assuming they've got to all the legal aspects and the legal authorities and, yeah. you know, town government's a little bit different than uh, commercial transactions, so. Right, I think they've talked with um, town council about this, but um, maybe what we could do is make a motion that says that the the commission um, is uh, happy to to adopt um, electronic signatures as an option, provided that 
the town approves uh, the town and gets all necessary approvals and buys the necessary software. Second. All right. <laughs> I sounded like emotion. <laughs> all right, that that sounds good. Uh, any any further thoughts or discussion? Um, okay, hearing none, then we'll call call the question. Tim Hilchi, aye. Bill Mayor, PC, aye. Uh, Pete Law, aye. The next one is discussion of standardized standardized condition form. So interesting that uh, that uh, our one of our applicants was talking about how Greenfield has eight pages. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be good to do some research and see what uh, those eight pages are and and um, whether we need to be. I mean, obviously our situations are markedly different. Greenfield is a much more developed community, but um, I think uh, we've started down the path of having some standard things that we're requiring, which is a great thing. And, um, you know, I don't know if the MACC or, or just consulting with other, other towns that are near us would be the path that we want to follow. But um, I just thought it would be easier for us going forward to make motions more succinctly and um, so on. And, and easier for Sue if she doesn't have to type up all these things um, particularly the things that we we require on each each one. So, yeah, this is, on? yeah, this is Pete Law. I think it's a great idea, um, and I was going to suggest uh, to see what the uh, MACC has for boilerplate, you know, as as guidance, and maybe we do reach out to um, several of the neighboring towns, like Greenfield, uh, somebody else said that might be Amherst. a little further along, you know, a little larger, uh, kind of a commission activity and see what they have and we can pick and choose. I'm not sure we're ready to choose them tonight. We have kind of no. our set set numbers, but I think we should move forward and um, checking with MACC and, and one or two of the uh, neighboring towns. You concur, Bill? Yes, Bill Mayor PC, I do. I do concur because I, I like, like Peter is saying, we have two towns in Greenfield and maybe either Northampton or mm -hmm. Amherst, um, uh, which could, you know, provide some good background. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right. So I don't know that we nest we don't probably need to have an emotion on emotion on that. But um, as far as a plan to how to proceed, you want to um, maybe we could ask Sue if she could contact uh, the building the uh, commissions in Greenfield and. And maybe Amherst or Northampton, and ask them if they could share. And then um, I could try to reach out to the MACC to see if they have a, you know, a list of um, uh, standard conditions that they like to see um, or like to have commissions have in their quiver to use. Um, if that makes sense. Tim, Bill Mayor, PC. I think that that makes total sense. So I'm getting that into the minutes now. Okay. Good. Yeah, Pete Law, I would agree. Um, then in the next meeting or two, we can look at the compilation and then kind of decide which ones would, would best fit the uh, town of Deerfield. Great. Um, all right, so now um, there was something that Sue didn't, I don't know if she shared it with all of you, but we got a, a request for comment from the planning board um, about the treehouse site. Uh, phase two um, and uh, their their meeting is going to be um, I don't know when it's it's coming up um, next week I believe both the planning board and the ZBA are meeting on this um, so do I guess uh, do we have any comments that we want to share with them that we've we've approved the work for phase two that doesn't affect the come the or or what do we want to do? Uh, so Tim, uh, Bill Mayor, PC, I think that uh, our comments actually uh, are in the form of an RDA, right? Mm -hmm. um, right. Uh, uh, that that you know we issued a negative three determination with conditions, right? Um, so that's what we'll tell them. And, uh, yeah. 
is Pete Lai, I agree. I think when we get to the phase three, we will have many more things to discuss with the phase two, you know, it seemed to be, you know, well-designed and engineered and, and, uh, and so forth. So I, I think it stands on the, on the uh, decision bill and the, and the conditions that we gave them. Okay, so um, what we can do in the minutes, if you would, Bill, and I'll follow up with Sue, is um, I'm, I'm not sure how these comments get uh, passed along, but I'll advise her that uh, she should inform the planning board and the ZBA that we've issued a negative three determination for phase two, and that um, we will have you know, further comments uh, if phase three comes to us in the, form, in the future. Is Bill Mayor PC that's fine? I, I'm I'm going to keep it um, based on phase two though. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Sense. Yeah. Yeah. Don't anticipate phase three. And just let it. When it comes, it comes. All right. Um, is there any other business that we needed to dis discuss? Uh, Bill Mayor PC, I I do not have anything further. Okay. Um, so do we all agree that August 26th would be a good date for the next meeting? Bill Mayor PC, yes, it is for me. Yeah, Pete Law, as far as I know, that should work, yeah. All right. Um, well, if there's no, no other business, then um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, Bill Mayor PC, I'll make a motion to adjourn at 821. Pete Law, I second that. All right. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, Tim Hilchey, aye. Bill Mayor, PC, aye. Pete Law, aye. All right. Um, well, thank you, General. Uh, thank you, Commissioners. <laughs>